Hi, I'm Jeremy Brecker with the Labor Network for Sustainability, and in this installment of Strike, Commentaries on Solidarity and Survival, we will be talking about the Green New Deal in the cities, need, and opportunity. While the Green New Deal has been largely blocked at the national level, it is thriving in communities, states, and cities. This commentary examines the Los Angeles and Seattle Green New Deals in the context of urban policy for climate justice. San Francisco, Washington, D.C., and Boston have instituted location efficiency strategies, more efficient modes of transportation, transportation and electric vehicle infrastructure investments, and transportation planning to reduce the isolation of historically marginalized communities. Boston and San Jose have effective energy efficiency programs, programs to decarbonize the electric grid and reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and programs to simultaneously save water and energy. Boston, Orlando, Portland, and San Francisco are substantially reducing local government greenhouse gas emissions through investments in energy-efficient municipal vehicle fleets, renewable energy systems, and complete municipal building retrofits. The scorecard incorporated justice-oriented policies like requiring equity assessments for city policies and budgets, providing support for owners of affordable housing to achieve energy performance standards, funding subsidized access to public transportation for low-income communities, and creating utility-administered energy efficiency programs for low-income customers. The Green New Deals in Boston, described in the previous commentary, Los Angeles, and Seattle, provide a holistic approach that addresses all of these policy areas as elements of a coordinated strategy of transformation. Los Angeles is the second largest city in the U.S. with nearly 4 million residents. It has long been known as the smog capital of America. In 2019, Los Angeles launched the Los Angeles Green New Deal. According to then-Mayor Eric Garcetti, the plan was based on four key principles. A commitment to the Paris Climate Agreement, a responsibility to deliver environmental justice and equity, through an inclusive economy guided by the communities themselves, a duty to ensure that every Angelino has the ability to join the green economy, and a resolve to demonstrate the art of the possible and lead the way. The plan calls for 100% carbon-free electricity by 2035, 100% net zero carbon new buildings by 2030, and all buildings by 2050. 80% zero-emission vehicles by 2035 and 100% by 2050, 95% landfill diversion rate by 2035 and 100% by 2050, and 100% of wastewater recycled by 2035. The Los Angeles Green New Deal was one of the first city-based climate change action plans designed to meet the International Paris Agreement limits on global warming and achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. The plan laid out 445 initiatives estimated to create 300,000 green jobs by 2035 and 400,000 by 2050. At the end of May 2022, the city released its third annual progress report on the Los Angeles Green New Deal. It found that the city has met or is on track to meet 60% of its 97 Green New Deal goals for 2021. It generates 36% fewer emissions than in 1990. It meets 43% of its energy needs with renewables like wind and solar. It will generate 97% of energy with renewables by 2030. It is ahead of schedule on EV charger installations, cool roof, and cool pavement installation. It's behind schedule on waste reduction and tree planting. 
Early in 2022, the Los Angeles City Council established a moratorium on oil drilling, approved $110 million in the city budget to decarbonize nine city properties, and created the new Climate Emergency Mobilization Office. In December 2022, the Los Angeles City Council passed and outgoing Mayor Eric Garcetti signed a series of ordinances to phase out oil drilling, prohibit natural gas in new construction, and outlaw styrofoam and single-use plastics. Buildings account for 43% of greenhouse gas emissions in Los Angeles. An ordinance passed 12-0 to 0 by the City Council requires new buildings to be all electric. Starting in April 2023, new buildings are prohibited from having combustion equipment, gas piping, or fuel gas for purposes such as space and water heating, cooking, and drying clothes. Electricity must be the sole source of energy for all lighting, appliances, and equipment. The ordinance was developed by the city in partnership with LEAP LA, a coalition of community groups and environmental justice advocates, and received strong support from groups representing frontline communities. Gloria Medina, executive director of Scope LA, said community members in South Los Angeles made an effort to learn about decarbonization and the impact of poor climate on their health. Medina said of the ordinance, it is about black, brown, and indigenous community members at the forefront. This is their win. Frontline communities have been raising concerns for a long time, according to Nancy Halpern Ibrahim, executive director of the Esperanza Community Housing. Those concerns have only recently been heeded by our systems and politicians, she said. We want to be clear that this was only possible because of the leadership of frontline communities. Chelsea Kirk, policy analyst at Strategic Actions for a Just Economy, said, We think this is a super important logical first step that allows us to make progress in our net zero carbon goals as outlined in the Green New Deal. Retrofitting older buildings represents the logical next step which will require protection for renters and an increase in production of renewable energy. According to Councilwoman Nithya Rahman, we are in a good position to be able to discuss those issues in detail with the safeguards that we need to ensure that renters are not bearing the burden of retrofitting costs. Seattle represents a model of a municipal Green New Deal very different from Boston or Los Angeles. The initiative for the program came primarily from a coalition of activists, especially in poor communities, rather than from mayors and mayoral candidates. The program is paid for by a special tax on big business, voted by the city council. A Green New Deal oversight board with strong representation from climate-impacted communities makes recommendations for how to use the funds. Cyrus Valentine, co-chair and youth representative on the Green New Deal Oversight Board, described its origin and development. Shortly after the Sunrise Movement's 2018 sit-in in House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's office, demanding a Green New Deal, members of the climate group 350 Seattle met over dinner to discuss the difficult task of pushing for national policy change from the local level. Someone said, What would it look like to have a Green New Deal for Seattle? That kicked off weeks of discussion that included indigenous-led and frontline-focused organizations along with environmental NGOs. In June 2019, following the wave of Sunrise Movement youth-led actions for a national Green New Deal, 350 Seattle and Got Green, an environmental justice organization based in Seattle's South End, teamed up to launch a campaign for a local Green New Deal. The Immersion Coalition dubbed itself Seattle for a Green New Deal and described itself as a people-powered movement demanding that the city of Seattle create its own Green New Deal 
to eliminate climate pollution by 2030. The coalition recounted, We mobilized over 10,000 people in the first three months of the campaign. We held community events, canvassed dozens of Seattle neighborhoods, and organized a game-changing candidate forum. Seven of nine city council seats were up that year. And as all that organizing was underway, 350 Seattle and Got Green worked with a broad coalition of environmental justice groups and city council champions to create Seattle's Green New Deal resolution. This coalition included Got Green, Puget Sound Sage, Mazaska Talks, Chinese Information Services, Duwamish River Community Coalition, Transit Riders Union, Sierra Club, and Emerald Cities Collaborative. The Green New Deal for Seattle was endorsed by over 200 organizations, including labor unions, advocates from low income and communities of color, tribal nations, faith leaders, health care providers, businesses, environmental advocates, and clean energy experts. A hundred people delivered a letter to the mayor demanding the city eliminate all emissions by 2030. In August, a jam-packed city council meeting passed a Green New Deal resolution, committing to the 2030 goal, affirming the importance of a just transition, and outlining strategies to become carbon-free in an equitable way. In September, the city council established the Green New Deal Oversight Board, comprised of 19 individuals, many connected to groups disproportionately affected by climate breakdown. Faced with the COVID-19 pandemic, in 2020, the Seattle City Council passed a progressive payroll tax called Jumpstart Seattle. It provided emergency pandemic funding for a year, then directed its funds to support affordable housing, small businesses, equitable development, and the Green New Deal. Businesses with at least $7 million in annual payroll were taxed on salaries and wages spent on Seattle employees who make at least $150,000 per year, with tiers for various payroll and salary amounts. For example, a company with an $8 million payroll and one employee making $180,000 would pay a tax of $1,260. The top 2.4% rate apply to salaries of at least $400,000 at companies with at least $1 billion in annual payroll, notably Amazon. The tax applies to about 800 businesses and raises about $200 million per year. There was a political backstory to jumpstart Seattle. In 2018, the city had passed a per-employee head tax on large corporations, but repealed it less than a month later under pressure from Amazon and other businesses. Labor was split on the tax, with unionized service workers backing it and construction workers opposing it. In 2019, five city council candidates defeated five business-backed candidates. Seattle was also deeply affected by the Black Lives Matter movement, and a tax Amazon campaign threatened to take a big business tax to the voters. The Jumpstart Seattle tax plan differed from the previously defeated head tax proposal by exempting lower-paid jobs at local businesses. As University of Washington professor Jason Vigdor explains, politics is about coalition building, and two years ago Amazon was able to construct the coalition. But there aren't a lot of people working for Bartell Drugs making $150,000 a year. The way this tax has been structured distributes the burden of the tax to the businesses with a greater capacity to pay. Jumpstart Seattle was opposed by the Seattle Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce, the Downtown Seattle Association, and a number of neighborhood business associations. It received united backing from organized labor. It passed the city council 7 to 2. When the Green New Deal Oversight Board convened in late 2021, 
It conducted surveys and listening sessions on how to spend Green New Deal funds. It distilled proposals into 15 recommendations to the mayor and city council, including investing in climate resilience, electrifying city vehicles, and supporting tribal sustainability projects. The city thereupon diverted much of the revenue from Jumpstart to its general fund. The Green New Deal Oversight Board pushed back, urging the city to put guardrails around Jumpstart. After it summoned community members to attend the city council's budget meetings, the city council proposed budget amendments more in line with the Green New Deal Board's recommendations. Based on the board's proposals in September 2022, the city passed $6.5 million in Green New Deal Opportunity Fund investments to accelerate the city's efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, build community resilience to climate change, and increase net zero affordable housing. By 2023, the board has shaped the investment of $27 million for climate resilience in frontline communities, electrification of multifamily affordable housing, and help for low-income homeowners to transition to electric heating. Seattle's Environmental Justice Fund provided $750,000 to the Beacon Hill Council, Black Farmers Collective, El Centro de la Raza, Environmental Coalition of South Seattle, Feed Seven Generations, Rainier Avenue Radio, Restaurant to Garden, Somali Community Services of Seattle, Sound Generations, South Seattle, Emerald, United Indians of All Tribes Foundation, Wa Na Wari, and the Wing Luke Memorial Foundation. Activists involved with the Seattle Green New Deal have reflected on the experience. Cirrus Valentine says, This wouldn't have happened without a strong grassroots campaign. Jess Wallach of Seattle 350, a member of the Oversight Board, describes the recipe for organizers' rapid success, equal parts building robust relationships among community partners maintaining public pressure on city officials, and forging an alliance with the support of a city council member. Taken together, these actions created a strong inside-outside game. Debelina Banerjee, Green New Deal board member and Puget Sound Sage policy analyst, observes, We didn't organize with labor early enough. Unions felt like they were being asked to support something they didn't help shape. Eventually, the coalition won labor's support, but it cost time, energy, and effort that could have been saved by reaching out at the start. Matt Remler, another Oversight Board member and co-founder of the indigenous rights organization Mazaska Talks, says the coalition avoided tokenizing by coordinating with representatives from environmental justice organizations and giving them the gavel, not just a seat at the table. While working with then-council member Mike O'Brien's office to craft the resolution and ordinance, frontline voices were prioritized in defining agendas and goals, as well as directing the shape of legislation. While working with then-council member Mike O'Brien's office to craft the resolution and ordinance, frontline voices were prioritized in defining agendas and goals, as well as directing the shape the legislation would take. In the end, frontline communities won eight of the 19 seats on the oversight board. Receiving an award to Seattle from the global climate group C40 Cities, Seattle Mayor Bruce Harrell articulated the essence of the Green New Deal in American cities. Effective climate justice work requires true collaboration with those most impacted by economic, racial, and environmental injustice. It's about people, connection, and partnership. Seattle's Green New Deal centers our most impacted communities and brings forward meaningful solutions to meet the scale of the climate crisis.
I'm Jeremy Brecker with the Labor Network for Sustainability, and this is Strike, Commentaries on Solidarity and Survival.